include pride and joy of the people who live and work right here in Borrego Springs. Well, there's the mountain over there. But look over here, <laughs> right beside the road, we've got, well, I'm not sure what these things are. What are these things, Dennis? Hello, Hugh. I'm Dennis Avery. Nice to meet you. Hey, this is Ricardo Brasida. Nice to meet you. What are we standing beside? The, the original inhabitants of Borrego Springs. This is called a? Gomphotherm. Okay, boy, it kind of has an echo coming off of it here when you're standing up this close. What in the world are these things? And look, there's another one right over here. They're placed all around the area here. What are these things? Why are they here? Well, they're coming home uh, because I, I live here. It is a home of mine in this area. We sponsored up at the visitor center a very interesting science project of the animals that were here past thousands and millions of years. And we had a wonderful book, Art, Everything Put Together. We decided to go three-dimensional. We needed an artist. We found the artist, Ricardo Arroyo Braceda, a terrific talent who makes these out of new rolled steel. Now, your idea was to take the pictures, the drawings of the animals that used to be here thousands, millions of years ago, and actually bring them to life in these sculptures and place them all around town. What was the reaction of the townspeople when you first put one of them out here in the middle of a field out here? Within three days, it was magnificent. I was ready to take them down. I thought people might be angry. <laughs> it went the other way. Everyone was very interested and loved it. Yeah. They... So we went from these original three to more than 54 now. Hugh. Wait a minute. You've got 54 of these things placed all around this area here. That is right. And that's the beginning. Now I've seen one that's just right over here. Well, look, there's two little camels right over there. And then there's another camel across the way there. What's the deal on the camels? The camels were here before we were and they were large and through the artistic talent of Mr. Braceda here, Senor Braceda, we have brought them back to life in three dimensions. I'm so impressed. I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> and everyone who's coming out here to see them seems quite happy also. You've got camels, you've got sloths, little sloths and big sloths. That is correct. We put sloth babies, huge ones, on the backs of the mother sloths. Mm -hmm. People said that didn't happen. I went down to Costa Rica, visited today's sloths. They do ride on the backs. Yeah, so these are all correct politically and geologically and biologically and whatever else it is. These are the real things right here. This is the way it would have really looked. Uh, in, with artistic license. All right, artistic <laughs> license. That brings in our artist right over here. Let's all walk over here because this is a huge piece of sculpture for you to put together. How do you go about making something like this? Uh, I start with a frame and we go from there. Do you look at old pictures? Do you look at drawings? A uh, picture or model is good enough for me. It's all I need to know is the size and we go from there. It's through the time I make it, you know, like better. Uh huh. Uh, so how do you know how big to make this thing? This is huge. It's about life size, the way it was about, you know. So it would have been this big? About that size, yes sir. Wow. And what do you do? What kind of metal is it made with? How do you put it together? I use a frame when I use recycled metal for the frame or whatever I take my hands on. Mm -hmm. But for the outside, I'm, I get a brand new sheet metal, 26 gauge sheet metal. Sheet and, metal? And, and just I, what, you, you tap it together or weld it together? Weld it together, and piece by piece, hammer it, you know, until it give you a nice muscle tone proportions. Wow. And it's, it's fun. Look at this. It's absolutely done so beautiful and the way it's rusted. And look, even the eyelashes up here, and the eyes, and the ears, and it almost looks like real skin up there above the ears, the way it's, it's uh, wrinkled and, like this. And we don't have to feed them. We just look at them. <laughs> and they're going to last for a long time, aren't oh. they? Oh, they will. They will last for a long, long time. And the older they got, the better they look. How many pieces have you done so far? 
about 54 in this place. 54. Here. Now, can you tell the difference about how your work has evolved and changed and maybe even gotten better as you go along? Well, everything has got to be better. Once you start doing something and you keep doing it, you got to make it better. That's the whole thing to do. Got to make it better. So everyone is better. Everyone is different. And everyone has his own personality. So it's something to see in every single one. Spoken like a true artiste. Yes, he's the Picasso of steel. He, <laughs> he, he never went to art school. He learned how to weld and he puts it together. I'm just so amazed how he does it. Now we've come on a sculpture. That's a bird. That's right, that's a big bird. And you should know because you installed this piece of sculpture, yes, didn't I you? Did. Yes, Introduce I did. Introduce yourself to everybody. I'm Oki McNatt, and we own a business called Whippersnappers. Whippersnappers, yes. that's a local business yes. here in Borrego yes. Springs. Yes. And your normal business is doing what? Pads, um, footing, septics, that sort of thing. Construction work? Yes. How did you get involved with all of this? Well, uh, at first we donated our time, and then whenever it got to the point where uh, it got into the big animals, then Dennis uh, said, uh, you know, keep your hours and we'll go from there. So your job is installing all of these things. You'd never done anything like this before. No, I did not. Well, what's it like to, what do you have to have, a big lift of some sort? Well, we have a big backhoe with an extender hoe, and uh, basically it's trial and error in the beginning. And uh, it's pretty uh, tedious work because you have people all around you at the time and at any moment something could happen. Yeah, and I guess now people in town, well, you're a town person. Yes. What did people think about this? Be honest now, when it first all started. Well, at first, uh, I, I think people thought Dennis was crazy, but... Oh. Uh, <laughs> Needless to say, the community got overwhelmed with it and, and they are very enthusiastic about it now. And when people start enjoying them, you see 20 or 40 people at each statue or sculpture, then you know that the artwork's doing something. Yeah, because people, when you're installing them, I bet you have people coming out here watching, don't Absolutely. You? Most of the time, poor Ricardo and I can't get nothing done because of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. Yes, that, that is. And you're kind of into all of this now, aren't you? This is kind of... You've been doing it a couple of years. It kind of grows on you, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. Each one of them gets seem to get easier as we go along now. Do you think you have developed through all of this a greater appreciation for art? Yes, I, yes, I have. Yes, and I have. What about for natural history? Finding out, did, did this bird, for example, there never was a bird this size out here, was there? Well, let's hope there wasn't, but I'm sure there was. Otherwise, we wouldn't have one sitting up here, I don't think. Well, we've seen a lot of sculptures of prehistoric animals, of animals that aren't here anymore. They lived here thousands, tens of thousands, millions of years ago, but we're ending up here standing in front of these beautiful sculptures of something that is still very much here. Dennis? Well, that is so true, Huel. Uh, the fact is we're in Varego Springs. Varego in Spanish means sheep, like these peninsular sheep a protected species named after it. They're here in the mountains. They're watching us every day, but we don't see them. So Ricardo made them to be seen, touched, viewable by the local residents and the tourists who come through here. Oh. So we brought them out of the bush. <laughs> and in a beautiful way too, because you've got them displayed all around this area in different situations. But the most dramatic is right here. What are these two longhorn sheep doing? Why are they, you know, raised up like this? Well, we try to make it some little bit of motion and they leap up to get some leaves from the trees or to start a fight, something like that. Now they have a motion, it's like a pitch of pepper right there. Wow. Nothing behind, just the mountains, up in the sky, and just imagine seeing the moon behind them. So you chose this spot. The two of you all choose every single spot for every single piece of sculpture. Oh yeah, with that where they go, he bring plants and everything is planned ahead. You know? So nothing, nothing is by chance. Well, we, we, and that's very kind of Ricardo to say <laughs> we do this, then he comes out and decides yeah. on the scene. And, and I relax with that, he's the artist. But what a beautiful place to have these and what a wonderful statement they well, make. It's gonna be some 
post a picture right there. Yeah, yeah it well, we're taking a picture right now. Yeah, well, that's I mean, <laughs> they look alive. Yeah, they do look alive. Well, congratulations on all the work you have well, done. I appreciate you telling me. Thank you for everything. This is beautiful work, and well, that's of course it's a lot this of is fun too. Your vision, your idea for doing all of this, and boy, what a wonderful addition to the community it is. You're both to be congratulated for what you have done. You have brought the past and the present to life for people to view and enjoy. Well, that's it. The end of an absolutely perfect two-day road trip to Ansa Borrego Desert State Park and to the nice little community of Borrego Springs. You know, they got it all. They got the spectacular natural wonders. They got the history. And most importantly, they've got a lot of very nice people. If you haven't been here, you've missed a very special place in California. I highly recommend coming to see it for yourself. Take enough time to get into the spirit of the place. This is a very special place. I know I'll be back myself. Goodbye, everybody. We've had an absolutely wonderful time. Yeah.